You're listening to WLRS Crypto Radio. We are not financial advisors. The content on this podcast and any YouTube videos are for educational and entertainment purposes only. The views and opinions of advertisers, sponsors, and guests do not constitute those of WLRS Radio or constitute financial advice. We urge you to make the best financial decision that suits your needs. Conduct your own research and seek the advice of a licensed financial advisor when needed. Know that all investments involve some form of risk and there is no guarantee that you will be successful with your investments. There is no guarantee that you won't experience significant loss when investing. This is The Macro Show with your hosts, David, Dylan, and Austin. Join us as they cover the macro landscape of crypto. Welcome back to the weekly macro show on WLRS Crypto Radio. I'm David, and I'm here with Austin and Dylan once again to talk this week's top macro news. Um, we also have some breaking news, which we'll, we'll cover in a little bit. Um, but how are you guys doing tonight? Good. I'm happy to finally be back. Apologies uh, if you if you missed me on the last show. Uh, I did have some family time I had to attend to. I do have a life outside of crypto, uh, even though it's dwindling by the day, sadly. But uh, I'm very happy. I think we got a lot of sh- cool stuff to talk about today, so I'm yeah, happy to be here. It's going to be good. Uh, I don't know if you, if you guys haven't listened to the end of the DeFi show, which aired yesterday. Um, we were doing the Twitter giveaway, and we got you know just some random... Schiller, you know, he entered our contest with the answer to what is an NFT. He said, DM me for promotion. Uh, I did end up DMing him just to, and I said, like, hey, you won. He actually responded this morning, and, and I had some good times just fucking with him. What was he? What, what, um, so most of those guys, they don't know really how to respond if it's not like a sucker that they're going to scam. Yeah, dude, it was funny, dude. He was like, uh, Thanks, sir. How to claim? I'm like, I just need you to confirm your entry with me one moment. And I, I went away for a bit to go actually go do something. And then while I'm doing that, he goes in and actually tries to follow like the rest of the rules. So he follows us. He retweets yeah. the tweet, you know, like he's going to win. And then he types, nice. he types confirm. <laughs> and I'm like, Thanks for so, following. So, like, the thing them. about those guys is they're usually, like, in third world countries and they're just, like, trying to make ends meet. So, it's, like, fun to make fun of them because, like, most of them are scammers or, like, I get them a thousand <clears throat> times a day. Yeah. So, like, I, I mean, just can't believe you responded. Position, like, yeah, I agree. <clears throat> but. <clears throat> no, it just, it just got down to the point where he was saying, oh, he was just doing his job and he wasn't trying to, like, steal a prize he didn't deserve. But I was like, you, you kind of had taken it both ways, you know, because you literally went and tried to win the NFT. <laughs> it's like, yeah. if you were just like, you oh, I, I was just shilling and uh, I didn't qualify. That's different, right? Agreed. 100%. Yeah. Oh, but you should have sent it to him. I got a kick out of it. I, I could send him one, but he's not worth well, how'd the show? How'd the, how'd the show go without me? Show great. Was great. I mean, it was probably fifty <laughs> percent better, at least. Fifty percent better. Yeah, that's a rough estimate. It's probably a little higher. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. We'll see what the people but, uh, say. No, you missed it. You, you what missed are we, the time. Where are we? Where are we at on Twitter followers? I, I know that um, sixty-two. We're, we're, we're moving up. We, we're moving Dave's, up. Dave's putting the work in, man. He he did follow me. And then he did unfollow me after we got into our argument. Uh, what an asshole! I know he took the time, and he was like, "You know what? I'll get you back. I'm gonna unfollow you." Like it's like it's not free to follow somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, it's take back what I said. Fuck that guy. Fuck him. <laughs> speaking of what's fuck the big, what's the what's the breaking news we that's have on the was, That's what I was gonna say. I was speaking of fuck him. Everybody <laughs> on Binance is fucked right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The Binance Smart Chain hack. Uh, Binance Smart Chain hit the brakes this afternoon, just at like 6 o'clock, so a couple hours ago, after uh, the BSC uh, suffered an exploit where somebody siphoned out $500 million worth of tokens. Um, So pretty much all trading on Binance is halted. That's a D. So I actually know a little bit about this one. 
Oh, go, go for it. It was, it was me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I wish. Uh, no. So they actually found a way to, um, hack or exploit the conversion of the B E P two token to the BEP20, which is what Binance Smart Chain uses. Yeah. Um, and he was able to mint out 2 million BNB, which is worth close to half a, a billion dollars. Um, and so what he's done is now he's set up about a million of those BNB into Venus, which is a leveraging platform, and he's leveraged a bunch of stable coins. He's sending them across chains. Um, and so that's why they really halted um, the BM, the BSC chain for right now, but it does go to show you that BSC chain is amazing for what it's worth, but it is centralized, right? Yeah, right. Because uh, the whole I was talking to Dylan before we started recording, but it was like that whole not your keys, not your crypto shit, that's out the window, right? I can't even buy a, a cake right now. I can't even buy some some pancake swap. It's and this is why I again love Avalanche. It cannot be stopped in the same regard. It is not centralized in the same regard. It is actually striving to be decentralized via validators, and there's over a 1,000. It's growing. It's an amazing chain. There's a ton coming on it, and this is not to slight BSC, um, but it, it goes to show you that... Uh, the, so the good thing about this is that, uh, don't worry, CZ has plenty of money to pay everybody back, um, so that's good, right? They have backing. They're huge. They're one of the biggest crypto trading platforms ever. Um, and so they'll have no problem paying back anything that's lost from this. But it does go to show you, um, to me, that decentralization is important um, because there's tons of people locked on chain. Um, that is some people's livelihoods sitting on chain, not being able to be moved. It's like if your bank just froze all of its accounts, right? Right. It's, that's, uh... that's exactly what this is um so no, this will get no... this will get cleared up but like you said like the bigger picture here is is what if something actually happens to binance itself um so that's got to get looked at i think a hundred percent i think that this is going to open doors for like even more regulations of like what how how deep can you monopolize one network that's supposed to be decentralized right Right. Uh, and currently and currently CZ has monopolized the entire BSC chain, clearly. Um well, yeah, so with the flick to of a me, switch, I can shut off the light and, and nobody can move a token until I say so, right? That's and honestly, exactly. I think this is more damaging than than a bank account being locked. Like if Chase right now just locked everybody out of their bank account, that that's insane. But yeah. there's so many things you can do with your DeFi crypto, you're missing out on potential gains, potential losses. I mean, an entire ecosystem is down. Um, so it's a little bit different than just having like flat cash stuck somewhere. Yeah. Uh, not only that, but it's more. I mean, if you, if you picture it like it's kind of like a whole country going down, not a bank, right? It's, uh, it's that, an that's, entire that's currency. Like it. it's, it's like the euro yeah. just, you can't buy anything with euros anymore. I, I would be more, well, it, I was going to say the euro is a perfect example because it affects so many countries. Like this doesn't just affect you know, one thing, it affects everything built on BSC. I mean, you can't buy anything or do anything right now. Yeah, DeFi protocols right now are not able to move. People have had, you know, transfers stuck for day, like an entire day. That's massive uh, for an entire DeFi protocol. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to follow. And I'll probably, I'll keep the Twitter just kind of posting updates about it. Um, cause we only talk, we only have episodes once a week, but I'll keep the Twitter, uh, just kind of posting updates, it's the same updates you'll get anywhere, but you'll have that beautiful, ugly, uh, walrus man broadcaster. <laughs> did you, did you check that out yet? Austin, have you been on the uh -oh. Twitter page? No, I've not been on today. Oh, go like on. I said, I just stepped in. I'm well, about to go look at it right you now. You go step into our Twitter and check out the banner. Cause I was fucking around with some That's AI art and. I put in frozen walrus radio broadcaster. Oh my god! <laughs> and this fucking is, monster is he show eating up. a? It's like a sushi made of walrus. I don't know That's what, what I said. It's oh, like dude, a sashimi. Yeah. It's it's messed up. I did a couple more <laughs> runs through of it, uh, and it turned like the thing that the sushi is sitting on into like a little like radio box. Oh, I, this is horrifying. That might be a penguin. With like a beak? I don't 
know, man. It's it's, it's scary. We're gonna keep it rolling though. Uh, at WLRS Radio, if you want to check it out for yourself. Yeah, pretty soon you guys got to understand that this the, this crypto Twitter uh, will likely give you a lot of updates you'll see in a lot of other locations all in one location. Um, and as we get bigger and, and more guests and stuff, it'll be a, a really great uh, source of information for you all as, as DeFi investors. And so uh, that's why I said I wanted to start this podcast so much. There's not a lot of uh, DeFi podcast material um that is dedicated towards like the niche area of DeFi that most of my investors use and most of DeFi investors there's nothing that really caters towards them and i think that's what we're trying to do here um and so you know if you like that kind of material i would highly suggest to follow the youtube and the, and the twitter yeah absolutely uh this next section it's kind of like an opinion piece um but will the next role bull run see eth overtaking btc uh, many have heralded the flippening a moment in crypto history yet to be where ETH overtakes Bitcoin as the top cryptocurrency. Do you feel the next bull run, uh, we're going to get close to that, or ETH actually overtakes BTC, or do you think it's going to be time, or it never happens? I am personally under the impression that it never happens. Um, I think that they're drastically different in their use cases. Uh, I think Bitcoin is more of a store of value, whereas Ethereum is an actual currency that is to be used in the ecosystem. Um, and I don't see that people ever value just holding it similar to the regard of like how they hold Bitcoin, right? Like the masses of Bitcoin is being held. Yeah. Um, that's what you do with it, right? It's a, a store of, of currency. Yeah. And, and then Ethereum, like most people that get into Ethereum get into DeFi. And then if you get into DeFi, you need the Ethereum to use for gas. You don't just hold on to Ethereum. Um, of course, there are cases where people do that, but it's not the mass majority are holding Ethereum. Yeah, it's kind of a weird uh, sort of dichotomy where you have a, a lot of people, investors wanting all their, their crypto projects to stop moving so much with Bitcoin. Um, so it's like they're almost like calling for they want that to happen, but they're not doing anything themselves to to make that happen, right? They're still hoarding bitcoin because they know that that's the granddaddy but then on the other hand they're oh man we why did bitcoin went down but that doesn't mean we have to go down uh, so it's interesting there my yeah. opinion is ethereum definitely had a shot um prior to proof of stake um i think once the merge happened and we've seen the market reaction uh i i, I don't think it could happen anymore uh I think there was a time where Ethereum could have trended towards that way. Uh, I don't. I just don't think it, it it's going to happen anymore. Yeah. I mean, how many people do you all know that just don't even use Ethereum chain because you know something better in DeFi? Obviously, well, the old money of DeFi. Because I don't do it. Well, the the old money of DeFi for sure is still using it there, and they have amazing DeFi protocols. But the masses of DeFi users, the niche area that we're in. They're not they're not in Ethereum anymore. They're on BSC. They're on AVAX. They're on all of these other chains that are able to offer the exact same security as Ethereum now because it's not proof of work. It's proof of stake. So what benefit does it hold over Avalanche other than more expensive gas? Uh, maybe you all can tell me, but I definitely don't know of a reason. I don't know. Nope. I just hold ETH. I hold it. To me, it's like... You do hold it. Yeah, I have some. Not couple you know not uh not for DeFi purposes for no, just, just to for, have just for have accumulating just in to, the bear just you for keeps these yeah no i feel I, that i mean i'll 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 flip it when the price gets good and as will many others and and i think that's that's what it is it's not a store of value like how people view bitcoin and that's the main contingency i see of it ever flipping uh, I think that's what everybody was waiting for was the the great decoupling and the great flipping is the things that I've always heard in DeFi since I've been in it. The great decoupling would be when Bitcoin does not trend with the market, uh, but rather go the opposite direction. And a lot of people called for that this month, actually, um, that Bitcoin would see a rise uh, and decouple from the DXY and the market itself. And uh, I think it could still happen. I still believe yeah, I mean, that one. Way when I think that it's you can kind of see it like. You can see these little tremors. They're not like massive by any means, but right, you can see it's not so much of the exact same chart. It's like 
Bitcoin sort of drives the really big picture, and then these other, you know, smaller subchains have, you know, just little tremors up and down, um, sort of like micro trends. But they, you can still get good trading in in these these little micro areas. See, it's all about the Dixie, the um, dollar index. It's a stock ticker you can follow. DXY. When it goes up, Bitcoin goes down. When it goes down, Bitcoin goes up. Yep. Uh, hey, it's interesting. Speaking of people not using Ethereum and it being old news, Robinhood is beta testing its uh. Web3 wallet. So there's the big adoption word once again. Uh, Robinhood's obviously a huge uh, stock trading app. And now they're now going to be offering a, a Web3 wallet. Uh, so they launched a 10,000 member beta test. Uh, and they're currently only supporting the Polygon chain on this beta test. Instead of, you know, uh, the that, big daddy Ethereum. Yeah, there it is again. I'm sure Polygon. Uh, it's Polygon's got some people in their corner that are just going crazy to get these these acquisitions, right? Yeah. Like they've got Disney and all these big boys, and now they're getting they're like really trying to go mainstream. Um, and Dylan can probably tell you, like when I first got into DeFi, I was super bullish on Matic uh, Polygon, but uh, but past that, they went quiet. Like they had they had a big run, you know, with what like OpenSea adding Polygon, yeah, yeah. and then another big run when Disney. Yeah, and so I think they sort of they had a a big run and then they got quiet and everyone was like, okay, well, well they had their time, and, and right now they're just kicking it into overdrive again. Yeah, well, just for my opinion on this subject is first and foremost, Vlad, the CEO of Robinhood. Vlad, I know you're listening. Fuck you too, bud. <laughs> uh, you cost me quite a bit of money back in the day. Uh, during the GameStop squeeze, we talked about that oh, yesterday. Oh, dude, yeah, when bit. they when they froze GameStop, they stole the trading. buy button or the sell button. Couldn't yeah. sell. Yeah, they're they're a disgusting platform. Um, you know, if anybody offers free trading, you're the service to them. You're you're free anything. You're, you're, you're the product. You're, you're, yeah, you're the product, and I think that's known is that they're just feeding information to market makers, and they're also using increased spread prices. Um, so you're not actually getting the end of the line you think you are on profit. And I think it's uh, I think they have disgusting business practices. Um, and I think they're under the thumb of some of the big corporations that DeFi is trying to take down. So I think it's insane to think this Web3 wallet will be anywhere near non-custodial, similar to what we see with MetaMask. Um, they're looking for an angle to make money. Um, and that is it. And if anybody uses that service, good luck to you. That's insane. Do yourself a service. Use a, an abundance of other free platforms um, that don't sell your data and have a history of being driven by security uh, and project oriented, rather than uh, a history of stealing money from their platform users. And um, yeah, that's what I would say. Fuck Robinhood. Yeah, and they they also did save their own ass because you oh, yeah. when everyone was buying GameStop. They said, well, you could buy, when they reopened it up, they said you could buy one one GameStop share per day or something like that. Yeah, some ridiculous, clearly. Uh, and it the, found the problem... out that they were like in bed with the company that was shorting. So it was Correct. like, and they're still open. Like, why did they not get shut down for that? They got injected capital from uh, Melvin. Like, uh, Melvin bailed them out. If I did um, that, I'd be in jail right now. Yes, yeah, you would. Yeah, they they they're just a, a really bad platform. Um, all in all, I just I just don't see how they could have a successful Web three launch, um, or that anybody from Web three would welcome them with open arms. In fact, I think it would be the one plate, like it would be the one service that everybody in DeFi would be like, "Fuck that," because most of us have experience in some kind of DJ and shit. So we likely had seen the GameStop saga and had some piece in it. Um, so yeah. if DeFi users were to pick that up, that yeah, would be I don't insane think, to me. I don't think like new or uh, existing DeFi customers are going to pick this up. I think it's more about bringing new people on. And it's the same thing I said in the DeFi show with Apple, you know, taking, uh, integrating those NFTs, but charging a 30% royalty 
uh, uh-huh. on top of anything. So it's like you're going to adopt a bunch of people because you're a, a household name, but you're going to you're going to turn off everybody that you adopted, right? Yeah. So it's like it's a double edged sword. Uh, hopefully, some of them stick around. Um. So and speaking of big companies moving. Uh, FTX buys the bankrupt Voyager, and they're also rumored to be looking at buying bankrupt Celsius as well. That's insane to me. I had not heard this until you said it. I would like to know what's on the, the debt balance sheet there. Do you have any ideas? Uh, well, if you keep talking, I can, I can Google. So my thing is, is that Voyager and Celsius both offered the returns they offered because they pretty much collateralized other people's money and borrowed against it and did some DJ and shit with it. If I'm not, if I understand that correctly, that's pretty much the gist of it and allowed like um, three arrows and stuff like that to fuck around with their money, uh, which is really investors money. Um, And so I'm pretty sure they had a huge, huge debt balance sheet to pay off. And I had no idea that anybody was interested in trying to bail that out. Um, so I would be super interested to hear how deep in they were and how FTX has bought them, so the, which FTX is pretty big. The bid, which was accepted uh, for that, was $1.4 billion, and that's for oh the total God. deal. I don't. I think the debt was less than that. Yeah, it was for sure. I was thinking like half a billion or something. And then, you know, they're going to like settle that debt for like a fraction of the cost. Yeah. So they're going to try and revive it, I wonder, or are they just going to I think take... they're just going to suck it up, yeah. Wow. That's ballsy, man. That's a huge move, honestly. And so uh, is Celsius, like, are they still locked? Did they yeah, ever unlock? Yeah, you can't withdraw. You can't withdraw. They had no money. They used yeah, all no, the money. Yeah, no, so everything's still frozen over there. Yeah, so FTX is going to allow people to withdraw, I'm assuming, is what the, the deal is here. That's if um, they get it. They have to get Celsius. Uh... Yeah, true. Okay, here's an update from four days ago. Sam Bankman-Fried sheds light on how FTX would approach a Celsius bid. Uh, They paid a fair market price for Voyager. FTX founder shared details on how his firm would approach a buy of Celsius assets. Snapping up bankrupt crypto under Voyager. Uh, Responding to a tweet. This is me speed reading. It's It's a pretty beefy article, of course. Of course, man. What'd you eat for dinner? What did I eat for dinner? I had, um, well, I didn't have much. I didn't have any eaten dinner because I've been on a call. I've been busy, so I have to eat eventually. Uh, I forget to eat sometimes. I'll be honest with you. That happens Uh, to me too. If I didn't have a wife, dude, I'd be like, dude, I know. (laughs) I did not eat yesterday, and it's a simple case, but I just, I just forgot. I just, yeah, fucking forgot. I just never got really hungry, so I just, I just kind of forgot. This space is daunting to your health. If anybody is listening and they want to launch a project because they said, oh, I could just sit at home all day, buddy, you're in for it. Because it's, it's so much. Here it's as long such, as you can. It's, Billy it's Madison, such a different you know? world. <laughs> it's, it's such a different fucking world when you're in it every fucking day. And I am. And, and you know, I love it. But it does take a, a special kind of person. Our phones um, don't stop. You can't be excuse oriented. You can't be, um, you know, driven by greed. I mean, I guess you could be, but uh, if you want to be here for longer than a month or two, uh, it, it takes a certain kind of person. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, that whole article was a wet fart, so I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> <Wet fart>. <laughs> <laughs> but they're thinking about it. They're 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 twiddling their thumbs on it. So I mean, I'm assuming what they do is is pay off the debt of what people have in those. So like if if there's 500 million in crypto assets they can't pay back, they'll fill that back up and allow people to do withdrawals and probably, I would assume, consolidate both Celsius and um, and the other one together Voyager, yeah. because they're competitors as far as I know. Um, and then they would be able to keep, th- they would be able to retain as many customers as they could um, and then use that platform for something else. It, it would be my guess. Um, but, I mean, ballsy move, and, and that's good for people that are invested in there. That's good for DeFi, quite yeah, honestly. That's great for DeFi. It's really interesting. Uh, like, you can see these big companies making moves, you know, right here in the heart of the bear market 
and you have to like so if you think like them and it's not just like oh accumulate now when it's low it's like they're they're a lot smarter than us uh sorry guys uh, no they are but like they're no, making they're, they're, these thinking... money. they're feeling safe right now right they're like okay we can we can spend one and a half billion dollars to buy this yeah right? because they're looking in 10 to 20 year terms right maybe even 50 they're not looking at am i gonna have enough money in in two days right they're looking like what does this do for us in 10 years? What does this do for the company of FTX? And if you look at it like that, look at the exposure they're getting, look at um, the the headlines they're making, and, and look at um, the potential return they could see of returning customers during a bull cycle of allowing these two companies to be bought out and used again in the next bull cycle um, and use that money appropriately uh, and, and ethically. And it's good for crypto, and it, it's going to be good for them. Yeah, I mean they're it gonna makes, make bukas off of that. It makes me optimistic that we're we're hopefully over the hump. Um, yeah, I, I I also agree with that as well. Another thing that went down this was a while ago, so it's not new news by any stretch. Um, but BlackRock partnered up with Coinbase a while ago. That, yeah, that I'm not was, happy about that. No, but like again, it's like it made me feel a bit safer about using coinbase to get back and forth between you know my bank uh, and using that for, for on-ramping sure. it's like they're not gonna let that die you know it's easiest um, for me as well by and large yeah I, I mean i use coinbase obviously and they are backed by you know they're u.s based and um you know they're backed by heavy hitters and so i'm happy that you know they're there but blackrock is uh, I mean, they're a hedge fund and they are vicious. Yeah. Uh, they've been buying up a massive amount of real estate. And it's scary to think of what the housing market uh, will look like after they're done with it. Um, you know, they're going to be setting the price of all of this. I saw some stuff so, about the housing market. It's it's going to go to shit, I think. It's uh, already it's going to shit. People like, are not able. It was basically the the foreclosure pause, I think, that that sort of like helped stem some of it. And then now they're starting to ramp those foreclosures up again. Uh, so it's going to get pretty funky in the housing market. Especially yep. for those with adjustable rate mortgages. Oh God, That's I would never be dude. good. I would it's never not be good for them. Like the one piece of not financial financial advice is not financial advice. Like don't get a flexible rate, anything on debt. Like if you take out, yeah, debt, like... yeah, no, it's a disgusting thing they introduced. Like people are like crazy to get a flexible rate. It it scares me to think because I got locked in at like two point seven five. Like I'm happy as hell. You know what I mean? I'm making money almost off of that. Yeah. Yes. Considering like what it's about to go to. All right, we got another topic which has been all over the news. It's been everywhere because of who's involved. Uh, Kim Kardashian. Is, is paying a $1.3 million, 1.26, I think was the, the number, but $1.3 million after the SEC case because she was shilling a crypto project and not disclosing that she was paid a bunch uh, of tokens to shill it. No, money. She wasn't getting paid in tokens. She oh, was getting, getting paid, paid money. in money. Money. Yeah, I mean... Max. This was one of those things that came out when like Logan Paul and all these social influencers were just pumping these tokens. If 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 I'm honest, I highly doubt she even knows what a blockchain is. Um, and I I think solely because she's just not in crypto and like anybody outside of crypto, I don't think nothing else I've ever seen from her would ever prove that point that she does know anything about the chain. So I'm assuming that her manager just took a deal that was very fast. Uh, and a lot of money up front, which is how crypto, you know, at least crypto scammers are able to accrue these large um, influencers like that is because there's so much money in crypto and it moves so fast. And so um, I highly doubt she knew about it, um, but people were kind of getting scared about it like that as part of regulations. I'm hype about that. Like yeah. she should not be able to do that. Right. Like right. that's clearly a very bad thing and it looks awful on crypto yeah and i think like long term again like you see like action starting to be taken as far as like the marketing side of things it's not just you know 
oh, this project is a security, this project is a commodity, like this project is good, this project's not. It's like, how are they marketing it, right? If they're just, you know, paying a bunch of, of high-end YouTubers and stuff to talk about their project, it's going to get interesting, right? These YouTubers are going to have to start, you know, making sure that they're covering their bases and disclosing yep. information that needs to be disclosed. So that yep. people... That's what I was going to say. So that people watching the YouTube can actually do proper research, right? They can take into account that like oh this person got paid xyz to to do this yeah yeah that's i mean if they can take down kim kardashian your run-of-the-mill youtube influencer if they're not disclosing that uh you know shiba inu pancake token uh paid me 20 million of their tokens before this video like they're they're gonna get start getting in some hot water i think um it's a clear like flag to everybody in the space like if you're shilling these coins you need to you need to start talking about how you're getting paid uh when you do this because all she did was put a hashtag ad at the bottom and it showed up sponsored on the instagram post so like she did you know what everybody else has been doing she just happens to be the biggest name to have done it and that's who they went for right so yeah. that's that, low hanging fruit it's a and flag. it was worth the money but it just shows like where your head needs to be at uh, as exactly. a marketer. Um, yeah, I hate I hate crypto marketing. Everybody knows that. Um, I refuse to market most of my products uh, because I hate how it's done and I hate the sliminess of it. Um, and usually, it's it's exit liquidity, especially in a bull market. Uh, if you buy into a video, um, you are most likely buying into exit liquidity. Yeah, I'd say that probably the best way to market your crypto project is to. Email us, uh, WLRS Radio Info at Gmail, and we'll talk about your project. You know, we'll uh, we'll talk about it, and we'll do it for free. We're not going to do it for free, but <laughs> yeah, but we're not doing it for free. <laughs> what the fuck? You can't see the slap coming across the, the airwaves. What <laughs> the fuck? We're not doing it for free. But uh, if you want us to show your project, the, we're not gonna. Pay us. We're not gonna. You're gonna. Know, people are gonna know first of all that you're sponsoring us. Uh, second of all, it's not going to cost, you know, what some of these ridiculous YouTubers are charging. Um, so it's, it's a good way to get your name out there, but you got to do it right. And you're also, and you're also allowing someone that, that leads a crypto project to speak in depth a little bit deeper. And I know that I don't have like all the credentials that some may have, but I'm able to speak about a project a little bit differently than maybe some others, especially crypto YouTubers that may not understand as intricately all the contracts involved and, and all of the you know, all the development side that could take to launch a project. Um, I think that that angle of being able to speak about your project, if you actually have a good project, um, will actually look good for you. Um, and yeah. so I think that's something to take into account. Yeah. I mean, shit coins too, but uh, preferably if you have a good project, we, we want that email. Um, this was your topic, Dylan. The UN asked, I guess, the Fed to stop the rate hikes. You want to dive into that? Yes, so um, we touched a little bit on it yesterday, um, but the UN is now getting involved in global markets, uh, something I'm, as far as I know, has never been done before. Um, they've called on the central banks of most countries, including our own here in America, the the Fed, um, to stop the rate hikes. They're they're fearing that a global re uh, recession is coming uh, due to these, which Makes... by all signs that we've seen so far, I mean, that's, that's what's, that's what's happening. Very, very I mean, possible. We... Correct. I think, we, I think we are in a global recession. What are we, what, what veil we are we putting over our eyes? So uh, you can calm down with your uh, well, craziness. <laughs> I think it's insane. You are the sheep. You need to lift the veil. <laughs> I think it's insane that the UN is getting involved in trying to stop rate hikes, which has been a process used to cut inflation for, you know, decades. But it's just, it's been too much too fast. It's and too much, Uncle afraid Sam. Of, it's, it's just too much. But I mean, this is happening globally. So just because the Fed's doing this here, I mean, central banks all over the world are raising interest rates again after the pandemic. Yeah, um, we printed a shit ton of money, and now we have you know completely unchecked inflation, and this is their only way to fight it, in their opinion. And 
the I UN think... is concerned that this is going to trickle down into countries that cannot defend themselves from such a thing. Trickle down economics. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Uncle Sam prints the bills and, and some weird country in Africa gets fucked. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, but it's I mean, that's already happening. It, that's it's already happening. Yeah. It's already happening because the U.S. currency is the world reserve currency, and so you see all these other, you know, we talked about this on our on the last podcast that I was on, is that like all these currencies are tanking right now in comparison to the dollar because everybody's trying to hold the dollar since it is the currency to hold during these times, and so the dollar is going up in value, and its comparison to others are tanking, and so um, you know th- this is what happens when whenever you know these rate hikes hit or inflation hits an all time high, and we try and curb it as the world economy. Um, this is what happens, and it, I think it has to play its course, but it is extremely vicious this time because of what happened during the pandemic, especially with the U S we printed so much money and just propped everything up on toothpicks. Um, and now we're trying to act like, Oh no, look at everything that's happening now. We need to stop doing this, but it's like, we put ourselves in this position. Um, and now it has to run its course. And, and even when they started doing that during the pandemic, I was like, you know, I get that people needed money and I'm all for helping and, and relieving people of that, you know, especially if there's, if it's if they're unable to get it right, but the the downside of it is that it has to come from somewhere, and yeah. uh, we're we're seeing it play out in in real life here, and it's scary. But um, right know, we'll now it's, it it's it's kind of a, it's a tightrope, right? So you have the unchecked inflation, which you know they're trying to taper down on on one end of this tightrope. If you fall that way, right? So you can do what the UN says, and you know, okay, we'll we'll, we'll ease off a bit. But then if, if it doesn't fix the inflation enough, that, that almighty U.S. dollar suffers, and then everyone suffers regardless. Or, you know, Powell just does a Thanos snap and, and ruins, you know, half the country's bills. Uh, that's not good either, right? So it's just, it's a, it's a very tight rope, and it doesn't really matter what way you fall off. Something bad's going to happen. Uh, it's just a matter of what side falls off. Yep, it's scary. Um, cheap shit coin, but yeah, she went up. The, she, she went up, guys. This is this is where billionaires and millionaires are made. Um, it's the people that can withstand this stuff and has pivoted themselves in a position where they can buy up real estate, where they can buy up assets, and um, and put risk on the table during these times. Uh, and so, like, I, I'm almost like thankful for being out of my you know, my regular job and being able to be in DeFi and be able to invest in some of these lucrative opportunities during inflation. Most of my currency is held in crypto, which does not inflate to the same regard. Um, And so I feel much more safe. Uh, It may not seem that way, but to me, uh, crypto is a safer investment than most of, you know, TradeFi um, in all avenues. And so I'm very blessed to be here. Uh, and be able to do this. So I hope that it turns out well. Of course, there's always risk, but um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's that's all we had in the in the the show notes uh, for tonight. So if you guys had anything else to say, or we can head to wrap it up. Let's awesome. outro it. We're at we're at um we're at about seven forty. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're there and we, we made it and I'm here and I'm back and we'll have another show next week. And do we have special guests next week? Dave? Yeah. LB LB from great finance will be on oh. the, the DeFi show. And as usual, uh, the macro show, we don't have any special guests, but if you have an idea for like a macro show, a special guest, like someone who, you know, that is like, this is their bread and butter, like send an email or, or go on the discord say, Hey, get this guy on the show. Um, I love LB. My now, I was know. gonna say, Austin, do you know LB from Great Finance? He's like my crypto brother, man. We have so much banter. Some of the steam that I get from like the community, and like if I get really pent up uh, from like all of the the shit that I'm taking and stuff, I'll just call LB, and like he experiences the same things I do. So he's one of the protocol, you know, leads that that I go to whenever I want to vent. And I'm telling you, I have him rolling on the floor laughing because of some of the shit that people say to me. Uh, yeah, and so I always, I always love, I always love LB. There was man some, raffles at you. There was some person in, in in Grapes Discord today that was throwing shade at LB because like his his volume wasn't good enough, like on <laughs> the on the Trader Joe thing. 
well, people the guy saying that he's not a good speaker or a leader or whatever. It's like Jesus Christ, like yeah, grapes like you, the OG. Yep, they sure are. And I love LB and everything he produces, and I always defend him. And uh, I can't wait to have him on. What do you do? If you know, you find out that LB it, is the guy with five hundred million BNT. <laughs> And then I feel like I'll be in a much better place in life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So show and special guest ideas to WLRS radio info at Gmail. Uh, and if you want to purchase ad space or become a sponsor of the show, uh, same email WLRS radio info at gmail.com. And with that, it, uh, it was an excellent week. It was a crazy week. Uh, and we have another crazy week next week. You can just smell it. Uh, so thank you for listening and good night everybody good night guys night guys